Hi, I'm Yame Ortiz and I'm in charge of the historical figure section of Acrylicos Vallejo. In this video, I'll show you how to paint this exclusive Alpine miniatures figure with the colors included in the Wehrmacht Unteroffizier Early War set. The miniature has a simple part breakup that allows an easy assembly and preparation for the painting. Once assembled, the figure is attached to a temporary base and primed with hobby paint spray black. I'll airbrush the base coat color with German Tank Crew 2, Sunny Skin Tone, and Black. I prepare four tones, mixing Sunny Skin Tone and Black with the base color, German Tank Crew 2. Using airbrush thinner, I thin down all the mixes so I can use them in the airbrush. The previously created intermediate shadow is used as a base coat and applied over the whole figure. Next, I apply German Tank Crew 2 as a zenithal highlighting, airbrushing it over the upper areas of the figure. After that, I apply a general shadow with black. I place the figure in such a way that the airbrushed paint accumulates in the lower, darker areas. Finally, with the previously created highlight tone, I apply maximum highlights that will reinforce the contrast of the whole figure. The aim behind applying the base coat in different tones is to create a basic highlights and shadows scheme that will guide further advances. Using black, I outline all the elements of the figure that cast a shadow over other elements. This helps differentiate the diverse volumes and adds more definition to the whole thing. I also apply the base coat to all leather and metal elements of the belts and straps and define all the seams of the uniform. Using Sunny Skin Tone, I outline all the edges of the volumes on the figure. 
This is a complementary process of the previous outlining. If I previously reinforced the shadows projected by the volumes, now I enhance the highlights that fall upon the edges. This helps to set the maximum level of contrast in the miniature, as I am already using the tones for the maximum highlight and shadow. With a bit of orange-brown, I do the outlining of the leather strap edges. It is a similar process to the one done before, but with the maximum highlight color of these elements. Now, I mix orange-brown and black at equal parts and thin it down to blend the maximum highlights with the darkest base coat tone. Using emerald and black in equal parts, I apply the base coat to the tunic's collar, typical on early war garments. For the highlights, I add more emerald in the upper areas, and also outline the collar tabs and piping that will be painted later in sky gray.
I paint a base coat of green-brown on the magazine pouches and the bread bag. Starting with German Tank Crew 2 and adding Sunny Skin Tone and Black, I prepare two highlights and two intermediate shadows to complete the palette for the tunic. I work on one area at a time, using the middle tones to integrate the maximum highlights and shadows generated by the highlight and shadow outlining. The basic scheme created with the airbrush serves as a guide to place each intermediate tone in the right place. The paint is not particularly thin. In this step, I want the application of highlights and shadows to look quite clear. The smoothness in the transitions will be achieved in the next step.
I've finished placing highlights and shadows. The volumes of the figure need to be easy to identify, and the level of contrast must be already adequate. To get smoother transitions between the layers, I use the previous tones, but I thin them down a bit more so they become more transparent. I work in small areas, trying to eliminate any harsh transitions. I also create new volumes, not present in the original sculpt, combining some simulated highlights and shadows that will add interest to those areas. The seams of the tunic need a proper treatment of highlights and shadows to accentuate them more. The highlights and shadows outlining, along with their blending, offer an adequate level of detail.
The tunic is finished. The more time you invest in the blending of the different tones, the more realistic and smooth the final result will be. As with the tunic, I create a palette of intermediate tones starting with dark gray and adding sky gray for the highlights and black for the shadows. I use dark gray as the base coat. The paint is thinned enough so the previously airbrushed base is still visible and serves as a guide for further highlight and shadow applications. I start applying the first shadow tone in the most hidden areas and the lower parts of each fold. Again, the paint doesn't have to be too thin as the desired effect is creating a basic map of highlights and shadows to accentuate the volumes of the figure. I apply the next shadow tone in the real dark areas of each volume, trying not to obscure the previous application. Using pure black, I reinforce the darker shadows and outline the details and seams of the trousers. I apply the first highlight in the most exposed areas and the upper areas of each fold. The second highlight goes in the extreme highlight zones of each fold and volume. I also use it for the highlight outlining on the seams. Highlights and shadows are finished. 
Now you can appreciate the map of volumes on the trousers. Again, as in the jacket, I use the same thinned tones to blend the layers and obtain smooth transitions that will add a lot of realism to the painted garment. I work in small areas at a time, creating smooth transitions and adding small wrinkles that don't exist on the sculpture. All that will enhance the realism and interest of the area. As with the jacket, the more time you invest in the blending of the different tones, the smoother it will get. All that will enhance the contrast and overall visual interest of the figure.
I apply additional highlights and shadows to the bread bag, adding sunny skin tone and black to the green-brown base coat. The base color for the canteen is a mix of orange-brown and black. For the shadows, I add some more black and some sunny skin tone for the highlights, which I apply in a stippling pattern to create a felt texture. I use black as the base coat for the boots, adding orange-brown for the highlights. For the final highlights and wear effects, I add small amounts of sky gray in the final highlights. For the helmet, I mix German Tank Crew 2 and Emerald for the base coat. I paint the highlights by adding small amounts of sunny skin tone and some black for the shadows. We hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section.